So you just kind of saw like an overview of the difference between a covalent bond and an ionic bond. But we're going to get into more detail, right? So if you didn't understand what was going on, uh, that's okay. There's still, uh, you know, we haven't gotten into the details yet. So here you have an example of a bond. This you see, if you remember from before, hydrogen only has one uh, shell, right? Remember, the rule is that if you only have one shell, you only need a maximum of two electrons. And so you see each one of these is a hydrogen, right? And each hydrogen brings its own little green electron. But when they connect right here, you see now each of them has two. And so that's the maximum that they can hold is two. And that's when they're most stable, right? So remember, if you have one shell, the maximum you can hold electrons you can hold are two. And once you reach those two, then an atom is stable and it is, it's content. That's all it wants, right? But if you have more than one shell, so every other shell after the first one holds a maximum of eight electrons, right? But in this case, each one has one electron that it's bringing to the table. And then when they come close enough together, they each share those uh, electrons. And now they both have two, right? When they're sharing. So this is kind of how bonding works in the sense of the covalent bond sense. But let's look at this in more detail. Again, this is just kind of to show you what we're going to get into. All right, so this is what we're going to be learning, right? These are the, the main points that we're going to hit on is why electrons are important in chemical bonding, especially the outer electrons and the outer shell. And right now, just uh, know that the outer shell and the outer electrons are called valence electrons or valence shells, right? So the outermost shell right here, I'll just write, oops. that over here and we're, we're going to see this a little bit more and then the um, electrons on the outer shell are called whoops not that valence electrons and again these are the ones in the outermost shell and so then we talked a little bit already about the octet rule, but we're going to learn a little bit more about that, right? And that's just saying, again, that the first shell has a maximum of two electrons, and every shell after that can hold eight. Uh, an electron dot structure, we're going to see what that's all about. We're going to dive into what an ionic bond is, what a nonpolar covalent bond is, what a polar covalent bond is, and what single, double, or triple bonds look like. All right, so these are all things we'll be seeing in a, in a minute. All right, so we've talked about this before, and we've seen an atom uh, close up, right? And we saw the, um, the what it's made up of, right? The subatomic particles that they're made up of. And uh, so again, just it is a basic building block of all matter, right? The Legos of the universe, basically. And so these, especially when you have it, or when you do have it in an element, it can't be broken down into any pure of a substance, right? An element is as pure as a substance gets. And in this case, you see we have neon, and again, this is the atomic number and there are 10 protons. And if you could, they could, they're moving all over the place, but you could count 10. But the important thing is, remember, if you have 10 protons, you're also going to have 10 electrons. And again, they're spinning around, but the first shell has two, which means that the second shell, the outer shell, has to have eight. And remember, neon is in the last column of the periodic table and everything in that last column has a complete outer shell. So they don't really bond with anything else. And so here again, we're talking about the electron shells in the octet rule. Remember, we talked about that the atomic number is just how many protons, and it's what we just said, right? This 10 number right here. But it also lets you know, again, that it has those 10 electrons. So electrons, they vary in the amount of energy that they have, and they occur at certain energy levels or electron shells, right? That's what's, what determines whether in the first shell, second shell, or however many shells that, elect that uh, atom has. And so electron shells determine how an atom behaves when it encounters other atoms. So again, I, I keep repeating this over, but it's really important. The first shell can hold up to two electrons and each shell thereafter can hold up to eight electrons. So it's usually what happens is if you if an atom is closer to the like a, a lower number, then it's going to give away those uh, electrons on the outer shell because it's easier to give away like one or two electrons than it is to have to go find uh, six or seven of them. Right. So if it has less. Um, like Na, sodium, right? It only has one electron on its outer shell. That is very reactive, which means it gives away that electron really quickly, right? Because again, it's a lot easier to get rid of one thing than to find eight things. So this is what we're going to be seeing as we go on through this uh, lesson. 